Ugh. All right, let's get this. I fucking crashed Discord immediately. Good. <laughs> it's all right. I, the I, second I clicked it, it crashed. I've been reading Delta Rain books for like six hours today. Oh, so wait. Have you decided on what game we're going to pick up in the summer? Because I think it was down to like Delta Green or Adeptus Evangelion, right? Uh. Wait, the shit crashed. What was the last thing you heard from me? Oh shit, Discord crashed! <laughs> Wait. What? That's the last thing I heard from you. The last thing I heard out of you was like, okay, have you decided on what the summer game is going to be? What? Do you think you were down to Delta Green or Adeptus Evangelion? Um, well, now that I have... Um, read through almost all of the 555-page uh, handbook, <laughs> which is for, like, it, it's mostly lore shit, um, but I'm pretty sold in Delta Green. The only issue I'll have is um, is running it online. Why is that? Because um, Delta Green has a lot to do with the mood and the environment. Oh, I um, see. And so I'll have to figure out how to translate that over online. Like, I do, like, handouts and, and like, adjust lights and shit like that. What even is Delta Green? It's basically tabletop SCP. What the fuck is SCP? Uh... I can't describe it to you. Another... It's basically, like, this... community project thing where they have created this fantasy... Like, paramilitary no. organization that catalogs cryptids and, like, other weird shit that the normal population shouldn't have to deal with. Well, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's a shadow, it's, a, it's basically a covert shadow organization that exists within the government that the government doesn't know about. Um, hmm. uh, the thing, the difference with SCP is all the major governments know they exist, and they have some sway over them, but they're mostly their yeah, own no. entity doing whatever missions they need to to keep people safe. Yeah, no, like they do shit like uh there's this lake that mont that like bizarre blood creatures come out of sometimes let's just set up a perimeter wall and call it a government landmine testing facility hmm. like shit like that no uh, don't, don't forget the warehouse that has a game show inside of it that kills people that has been running for like 30 years like weird like paranormal shit like that is what they deal with sentient game show i forgot that part um the sentient oh yeah the sentient game well, show that's yeah. Uh, Delta Let's Green is Delta like, Green's almost strictly also... uh, Lovecraftian shit. Mm, like there is some Lovecraftian shit in SCP, but it's there's also alternatively there's also shit like a mirror maze that just traps you in it. Don't forget about 420 J. Yeah. For <laughs> fucking Gerald. Anyways, right. Enough like explaining how the fuck SCP works. So let's see. So we're we're going to go on your robbing some nerd shenanigans, right? I I, I guess. Am I am I doing a solo rob? Uh no. Makoto actually does have a plan. So you left before Screws and the other guy did. So she's kind of just going to lead you out. So I'd be like, all right. Uh, I I forgot to give Makoto a car. Shit. Uh, hmm. what's a good shoe nation car? <laughs> the good thing about cars is they transcend boundaries of the borders. Well, okay, I already got a decent pick. It's gonna kind of lead outside to this little, like, Toyota Gopher, this, like, big heavy duty fucking pickup truck that is probably way too big for this woman, this but. Is not your style. <laughs> I mean, when you're living out in Bumblefuck, you need to transfer some shit over really, really shitty roads. Yeah, I guess so. And plus, worst comes to worst, we could probably fit a small gunnery array in the back of this thing. Right? Yeah? Yeah. Well, hi yeah, you could hide in the back with your dumb fuck-off rocket launcher. Anyways, with that, she's kind of just going to hop in and do her little Decker shenanigans. Sorry, her Technomancer shenanigans and get the car running. Huh. 
Totally would be like, well, though the shoe generally have no idea who the fuck you are or any of the things you've been up to because there's little or no, like you're wanted by the corpse, so they don't really care out here. But I do have an image to keep in this city. And you're also, I mean, you're under the cover that you're a security advisor for the school. Because why else would I be letting a sword-toting big motherfucker through my halls, but I digress. So I'm going to be taking you a little bit north. Because there's this small, I, I hesitate to call it a city. More of a town, really. But it's pretty much the place where all the nerds go to hang out, because it has the one tech shop for miles. Or, mm. I guess, this fourth of the country. <laughs> there's not one in Cheyenne. I mean, sure, there is one in Cheyenne, but they're mostly, they mostly deal with government contracts. Mm. I mean, I could get my hands on one of those, but that's a whole lot of red tape. And, sure. by the, and honestly, your two friends will probably be back by the time I actually get that in my hands. Mm-hmm. So, what better way to just go back to our roots and rob a bunch of nerds, right? Now you're talking my language. Oh, yeah. I mean, from what I've heard, because I have made some calls, like, the people over there, they're just playing, like, dumb little trid games or whatever. They set, It sounds like the skinniest one among them is probably about 200-some-odd 200, 200 pounds. So you could probably dispatch most of them with a good pommel strike to the face, if shit does get real. Just don't kill anybody. Uh, checks my ammo. Uh, I got some gel rounds. Okay. <laughs> well, you actually have gel rounds? Yeah, for my machine pistol. Okay, good. <laughs> And she's kind of just going to uh, mess with a little knob on the dashboard of the car real quick. That kind of just makes the windows get increasingly darker. It's kind of like a uh, adjustable window tint that she mm -hmm. has installed on this gopher. Like, no good. The cameras won't be able to see me, so they won't see the president's... Pri the Sorry. The mayor of Cheyenne's financial advisor sitting in a car with a fucking tech shop robber. No, no, no. I have a mask. <laughs> pull up my ballistics mask. <laughs> and Would she's you... also going to, like, t she's also going to hit a little button. Like, she's going to start flipping through menus on the little image screen on the dashboard, and one eventually shows what's clearly a license plate, and she just runs her fingers across and it randomizes the whole thing. Hmm. Huh. I mean, while well, yes, I can't control this car with my mind, I do need to make it at least somewhat accessible if, say, a groundskeeper needs to use it. Alright. I, 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 I say I, as I'm loading my uh, my Ares Crusader 2 with gel rounds. Like, she's a little distressed because I'm assuming like gel rounds don't look too different from your standard ball. She's like, I'll take your word for it. <laughs> I, I have exactly, see, I planned for this. I have exactly one clip full of, for, this, for this gun. <laughs> of gel so rounds. you were ready to rob a bunch of nerds? I was ready at to gunpoint? detain people, or, you know, non lethally detained people. Right. So after like a good 20 minutes on the road and some good old-fashioned banter, you do eventually reach what appears to be somewhat suburb a somewhat suburban area. It looks kind of like a bumblefuck resort town, mm -hmm. except it looks like it hasn't had proper funding in about 40 years. Right. But after a while, you do come like between all the like, people seem to be happy, similar to Cheyenne. They seem to be content with this environment. Mm -hmm. And before long, you do ultimately come across what appears to be a somewhat well-kept uh, computer shop. We're going by the not-so-great name of some stupid shit like Chief Bear's Decking Supply Store or something like that. Mm. And she's gonna just like, and she's gonna nudge you on the show and be like, "The guy running this isn't even shoe, honestly. He just does it for the branding or whatever." All right. So feel free to punch that dude in the face, because I don't actually. Yeah, I uh, hear he's a dick. So, uh, you put any more thought into this than just grab it and book it? Uh, let's see. I know that the front door has weapon scanners. All right. I know that they have a bunch of 
They have a bunch of decks. I mean, the, the, the police out here don't really care. He somehow, through some means, managed to get a couple of decks, and he just has them on use. But he has them configured in such a way that they will brick the second they are taken out of the building without his express permission. Okay. So what we're going to end up having to do is, I'm going to ha you're going to have to kind of get up to the door, and I'm going to do my best to remotely, I guess, keep it from bricking itself. Mm -hmm. I do have a jammer. That actually would also work. If you run out there, throw down a jammer, just fucking book it. It's an area jammer. Yeah, we actually could totally just do it that way. Sure. All right. <sighs> so really, in that case, your one job is to run in there, take the night, take whichever deck seems the nicest, and fucking book it. Or you could try to take one off one of the kids that may or may not be modified. It's really up to you. <laughs> And she's going to park in a little... She going to park in a parking lot, like, maybe half a block down. You can still see the, uh... Fuck, what's it called? Little overhang? The, like, the fabric overhang things? What the fuck are they called? Uh... You know what I'm talking about, right? No. An awning, yes, an awning. Okay. Yeah, there, you can see the awning with the branding all over it right down there. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you're free to go for it. Right. She again just puts her feet up on the dashboard and pulls out her combo and starts messing around with it. Well, I said, well, weapon scanner in the front? Yeah, weapon scanner right in the front. There, I mean, there's probably a back door that leads out to a dumpster. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's locked. It's probably going to be locked, but nothing. I mean, look at this area. You can probably kick that door in. Then again, that's bound to set off some kind of alarm and get the police coming down on you. Yeah. But, I mean, it's up to you on how you want to do this. I'm pretty confident you can get out here before the cops actually cause a stink. Yeah, I, I got a feeling I won't need any, uh, too many weapons. I'm just gonna, uh, take, yeah, take off everything except for my sapphire knife. Smart man. All right, you're free to go ahead. And, I get... How are you dressed again? I, if you would so kind as to tell me. Yeah, um, armor jacket. <laughs> Armor jacket? Eh, yeah. And That's some, fine. some no more clothing underneath it. All right, go for it. Uh, I could take my she was the armor puzzler, but it feels more like work than it's worth to disassemble it and then go in the bathroom and assemble it, just to have <laughs> a much. just to have a shitty pistol. I'm not even that good with because it's a light that, pistol. It doesn't show up on MAD scanners, right? Which is why it's the hot shit. Um, well, it disassembles, and it, it's a bunch of makeshift parts that you just, like, it doesn't even look like a gun. Oh, right, that's why. Um, but, like, it, it, it feels more work than it's worth. Ugh. <laughs> when I could just shank a guy. Pretty much, yeah, that's fair. Uh, yeah, I don't have anything else I can bring. Uh, so yeah, it's up. It's completely up to you how you handle this shit. The dart pistol. Does that have any uh plasteel parts? No. Nah, it oh, uh, just a, it's just a parachute dart pistol. Again, it's up to you how you handle this one. All right, just rolling in with my knife. All right, so you're gonna waltz right past the MAD scanner. It is none the wiser. And there's a couple of, like, pretty much the gambit of what you'd expect of nerds. There's the tall, skinny ones, there's the manlets, there's the obese ones, there's the fucking titans that probably weigh no more than 20 pounds. Mm-hmm. And at the front clerk counter is none other than just some really grizzled-looking Indian man. <laughs> Not, like, Native American, I mean, like, actual Indian Indian. Okay. <laughs> He's kind of going to, uh, and he's kind of going to look at you, and just going to like scratch his throat real quick, and he's kind of just going to point at a list on the side that just shows times. He doesn't even speak. I look at the list. What's even on it? Uh, the list. It's like, hey, would you like to try a fair light paladin, and with a bunch of exclamation marks and red circles around it, twenty thousand new yen an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Uh. 
And before there are more reason there are more reasonable prices running the thing from like ten new yen an hour to five hundred new yen an hour, but at the very top in the big red letters is Fairlight Paladin. <laughs> uh twenty thousand to play with the deck. What what even is a Fairlight Paladin? It sounds like a really or it sounds like a really good deck. And he's going to like and he's kinda of just going to shake his head a bit, and he's going to uh punch something into his comm like, and you're going to be greeted with text-to-speech, actually, because it seems like this guy does have some kind of issue with his throat and can't speak. Mm -hmm. Probably, I mean, smoking is the assumption, but you can't really be sure. It very much just details, and uh, it just goes on to explain, like, the Fairlight Paladin is the top-line deck of, uh, basically just reading off a Wikipedia production article. Mm-hmm. And it's like, that. that is why we are charging the very cheap price of using this five-of-a-kind, extremely beautiful piece of hardware. We find it quite fair here. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you don't even need to roll judge intentions for this. You can smell the shit. <sighs> Where is this, uh, is, is the deck here, or is it, do I have to go somewhere else to, uh, use it? Uh, we keep it right here, locked away under, under lock and key and 24-hour surveillance and guarding. Of course. <sighs> <laughs> I, I've been thrown into a conundrum. Hmm. Alright, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start walking around. All right. Uh, you see what the what for the most part you just see. Uh, fuck. What's it called? There are a couple of MCT trainers here and there. On one ta on one of the tables, you actually do see a Hermes chariot. Mm hmm. But for the most part, it's just a lot of Sony products. And one uh, Renraku Sagiri Surigi. Hmm. Any prices pricing lists for them? Nope, they are not for sale. Oh. He is pretty much just ripping off baby wannabe deckers. Hmm. So, it's, so it, this is just a try out a deck store? Try out a deck store, and... I mean, they're not there for sale, but what he does is he puts in orders for you at a significantly marked up price. Right. Hmm. That's his, like, 14 stage plan. Yeah, pretty much as of. Yeah, it's a future internet cafe. Okay. Except you can order the computers that they have mm -hmm. for like three hundred percent the price. Of course. All right. Um, I'm gonna see if there's there's a there's a lower level here. A lower a uh, lower level. Yeah. I mean, you, you uh, just roll perception real quick. Visual perception, of course. That's my specialty. God damn it. I'm gonna give him a second to finish talking before I continue detailing shit. Alright. So looking right past, it's pretty evident that there is... Well, to the lesser eye, it would look like a reinforced steel door, but it's actually just a very carefully pinned tinfoil on what's probably just a thin plywood door. Oh, no. <laughs> Oh. And to its immediate right is a stairwell with like a little label that says storage over it. <laughs> so it is immediately clear just how ghetto this whole operation is. Yeah. I was about to I, I was starting to think of plans to like get my monofilament chainsaw in here and shit, but I, or my welder. Um <laughs> You think they actually have a fair light? <laughs> well, I don't. Uh, countdown. Like, I mean, countdown is a little brainlet. On the other hand, they just know shit about. They just know too much shit about technology, and like, he heard, yeah, fair enough. He right. heard Bakoda say, say she has one, and you know, okay, yeah, it's that's sort of like a more common about. thing. And uh, as you kind of adjust your angle on that little door, you do notice that there actually is a guard, quote unquote, there, and you're also able to immediately tell that. His gun is just one of those prop guns with the orange tips that has been spray painted black. No. Yeah. 
And he's also out of cold and incredibly out of shape. He's sleeping? He is sleeping in his chair. <sighs> like, you can see the cracks on the little black ring at the end where the, where the paint is still orange. Alright, I'm gonna look around for any cameras. There are several cameras looking down at you. Hmm. But, uh, roll perception. Normal perception? Uh, visual perception. You do notice that there are no cables actually connected to any of them, but this is the wireless Matrix 2.0 era, so that doesn't mean much. But, considering this establishment, that's something to be taking note of. Mm -hmm. Or risk-taking. Right. <laughs> and none of the kids have really looked up at you, have not have really come to look at you. But uh, some of them are visibly scared by your presence. <laughs> I would be too. And at this point, you're going to like. There's going to be some something over the little intercom of this small, I'd say, like video store sized shop. So you're just saying, uh, a big the only <laughs> you, you like it's stuttering trying to figure out what the fuck. Do it's like, uh, sir, please come here. The adult. Please come to the front counter. Please, the adult? The adult. Please come to the front counter. Like, he's stumbling over his own words because he has, doesn't know your name, and there's nothing especially interesting about you, so he's just calling you the adult because he's surrounded by teenagers. Hmm. I'll, I'll walk back, I guess. Yes. He's kind of just going to be like, uh, look, you either need to buy something or leave because... If you want to actually purchase any of these decks, I need to put an order from you. In order for me to put in the order, you actually need to have at least one hour of hands-on experience with the deck. That is our mandatory policy. Now hold on, I'm looking around still. Uh, my my cameras have shown you trying to pocket things on several occasions, sir. I I I shouldn't I I should um. The hell are you police. talking about? I we have you on camera attempting to steal things from us, sir. Don't make me call the police. Do you want to show me that, that footage that you're accusing me of? Uh, no, I don't trust you in the security room. Why would I trust a criminal? But look, I'll let this all under the rug if you just spend a bit of time with our fair light. Oh, God. How many people are in this store? Uh, I'd say like six or seven kids kind of just crowded around a small little cafe. Like, uh, yeah, like a little internet cafe booth. I really don't want to draw, I really don't want to draw attention to myself right now. They are not even slightly paying attention. Because they have mm -hmm. actively tried to block your existence out because you stress them. Yeah, but if there's a blade in this guy's neck, then they might actually notice it. I mean, have you ever have you ever seen that one video of that one Taiwanese cafe where the kid gets gets his throat slit and half the building doesn't even notice? Well, different country. <laughs> I mean, if you dunk him behind the desk, who cares? No. It all depends on how good your blades roll is. Well, we all know how great that'll be. <laughs> it's up to you, because the one guard, quote unquote, is asleep. All right. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of kind of approach him a little closer, um, and get as in his face as I can get. And he immediately backs away, politely asking you to get off the table. Now look here. I'm not very fond of being accused of stealing things. I've never even tried to. I can call the cops here and. You know, let them do investigation. It's fine by me. Uh, but, but when they hear about the little sham you have going of offering a Fairlight Excalibur, that's that's false And with that, he's going to slam his hands on the table and demand that you get out of the building. But he is right up in your face. No. And his anger has pretty much suppressed any fear in him, and he is getting right up against you. And <laughs> quick, quick draw knife and pommel on the 
Roll into his face. Pommel? Yep. All right, roll. All right. <laughs> you sp- you smack him right in the nose, and there's a quiet little crunch of like the little of the of the knife's handle against his face, and he kind of just like has this moment of ow that said. fucking huh? does he go out or no? He kind of just like puts his hand over his like ow that fucking hurts. And I'm, gonna, he's, then like, I'm gonna grab him by his shirt. Roll your unarms. Mm. You can, you want to edge that? Yes. <laughs> Roll of cool. Roll of cool. All right, so that's six successes. You managed to hoist him right up before he can even react to the situation. Now look here. You're going to lead me down to take a look at this deck. If it looks nice, I'll try it out. Maybe order one. If not, eh, then I'll leave. And he's going to start nodding. Like, he has accepted that this is not a fight he can win. And I'm just going to lure, lure him out. Um... He's going to lead you right around past the guard. And he's actually going to gonna trip over keep, the sleeping... I'm going to try and keep oh, the, the blade kind of concealed from the kids. They have not even looked up. Good. They have not seen any of this. All right. And yeah, I'm guessing he's just, he's going to lead you over to the door, and mm-hmm. he's going to <laughs> he's going to take what actually looks like a business card and slide it into what's probably a fake key card reader, and just roll your quick roll some quick visual perception. Yep, yep, yep. He's gonna try and do something shady. And I'm gonna have to stick a blade in him. Nah, it's flavor text. Okay. Uh, you as, as your eyes kind of just like move around while he's fiddling with the machine, you actually notice two little spe- like two very not very well sealed speakers right above the door that release like a depressurization sound as he puts in. Oh my in the god! Keyboard. This fucking <laughs> god! <laughs> Why did you bring me here, Makoto? <laughs> Are you going to send that to her on her com link? Yeah, I'm recording all this in my eyes. Oh my god! <laughs> she could be st- she could be watching right now. <laughs> hey, and the door opens up. And the door is pretty, like, thoroughly covered in tin foil, but it's about as thin as a sheet of plywood. Mm-hmm. And there's all these... Fi- well, it's what I mean... What he's done is... He's put a bunch of Christmas lights on a very... Between two layers of plexi- like plexiglass at the top to make it look like a floodlight is going over the room, but it actually just looks kind of shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and <laughs> there's what actually looks like... For a moment, looks like turrets aimed down at it, but you're able to see right through it. It's just like fucking what are they called? It's like sewer pipe that's painted to look like a cannon pointing down at it. Like he has gone all in to make this shit look like it's under lock and key, but it looks terrible to like. Sure, a kid would be like, "Oh wow." Yeah, I was, I was, about, I was about to say like, something on. Lines. Like you, the shadow runner, is like, oh, this bait is full of so much shit. <laughs> Beautiful operation. And as here. promised, there and as promised, there actually is a deck sitting right there on the table. I'm gonna look at it. Hmm. Uh, it looks like a decent deck, and I'm assuming you like flip it over and look at the back. Yeah. On the back, smack dab is a fucking Ren Raku logo. <laughs> of course. Ah, oh, yes. Raku, Fairlight, Excalibur. Did, did, didn't you know that Fairlight is a su- subsect of, of Renraku? You know, I did a job for Renraku once. I think, I think they may have mentioned that detail once or twice. They were bragging about it. Yeah, exactly. It's a very, uh, one of their very prestigious subordinates. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, uh, would you, would you like to use it, sir? Would I like to use it? Uh, like mull it over. Yeah, sure. Why not? That that'll be. Uh. Yeah, I'll play afterwards. Don't worry. Oh, okay. Sure. Yeah. 
Sure. <laughs> I'm just gonna pick it up. All right. I'll I'll lead you to I'll lead you to the counter, sir, and you can plug it into uh, our little closed matrix network. No, I just want to check it out right here. Um, I'm gonna start going through it. All right. Uh, I'm just going to assume that there's some kind of no, like some way to see actual parts of the machine in game. Sorry, like in the game, you'll notice that. Uh, it starts with a pretty decent attack setting and sleaze, and it's data. It has decent data protection. You can mm. you're able to tell that much, but its firewall is kind of lacking. Okay. But you do notice you're able to shift priorities around with some reliability. Cool. And it's the Renraku Suru, uh, Surugi, by the way. Mm-hmm. Right. Cool. All right. Um. Let's. Pump all those points in the sleeves. That's my smart play. <laughs> Cause I want to do a little <laughs> bit of digging. I mean, I know this guy doesn't have a camera room, but pretty much, yeah. Um, and I want, I want to look through Cyber. See if there's anything like hidden on. Anything it. about it? Yeah, like if there's any kind of like, like, are you going to take apart panels? Um. No, I want to look through the like the actual inside part of it, or like see if there's any any hidden programs or something like, or any in programs. No, it's pretty much stock. Okay. Excellent. But you're able, but while well, looking around, you do notice that there's a pretty extensive restart history in it. So it seems like after whatever someone used it, they just refresh the whole thing to just, like factory settings, pretty much. Right. So if there were any programs, they're gone now. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, really... Unfortunately, I don't have anything to scan it for. Is there any tags on it? Hmm. What's the guy? Uh, what's the guy doing right now? The guy. He's kind of just sitting there with his. He's kind of just standing there, hands in the air, just like. He's still trying, he's like trying, you can tell he's trying to plan something, but he has no balls whatsoever. Mm hmm. Yeah. It's not a, not a bad looking deck. Yeah, yes, sir. Would you like me to order one for you? That's just a, uh, that's just a floor model. It's not actually fully functional. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna start looking at the deck more. Is it is it, is it fully functional? It actually is fully <laughs> functional. You're able like even as um, like not uh, aware, you you're able to tell the difference between a floor model and something that actually works. You know it's legit. All right. There there's there's so, one problem though. I'm gonna just start start counting on my hand. One two. Y yes yes. That's four lies you've told me. Um, really, really, sir, where where would you possibly get that from? And he's like, he's trying to inch around you, trying to keep a good distance. But it's still a small as shit room. Like, if you did one stride, you could pretty much block any of his movements. Mm -hmm. Four lies. So here's how we're gonna deal with that. Um. And I'm, go, I'm just going to go instantly for just a knee to the gut. <laughs> It'll be unarmed. <laughs> yep. No, at this point, I should just, I just, just, just level up unarmed. I use it so much <laughs> God damn it. I'm going to wow. do this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't blame you. Come on, roll a cool. There you go. Four successes, you get, you get the knee dead on into the scut, and the guy collapses. But something that does happen is, like, once he hits the ground, there is a loud explosive, like, <coughs> out of him. Which the kids don't hear, but, like, the obese guard kind of stirs a bit right outside the still open door. Mm hmm He's kind of going, he's kind of just going to lean up and look through the door. Can I quickly just throw this guy out of sight? Uh, he only got two successes, <laughs> and he's gr he kind of just looks at you like her. Ah. Kind of just going to squint and rub his eyes, and I just feel like, hey, 
you're uh, you're looking at the new shit, right? Yes, this is this is a wonderful deck. I may yeah, actually look at the Yeah, it's a Feralite Excalibur Paladin. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. He's kind of just going to fall back into his seat. <laughs> <laughs> is the guy next to me, is he out or...? No, he is, like, uh, gasping for air on the ground, like, audibly. That's one. Uh, <laughs> sir, please. Sir, please let me go. I'm sorry. Look, I'm, I'm just trying to run a business here. I'm sure you can understand that. Yeah, a scam. Uh, fine, you fucking got me, alright? Is that what you wanted to hear? No, I actually personally don't care. Uh, you can scam people all you want, it doesn't affect me. P people are idiots and fall for it, it's their fault. Why are you beating me up? Because you lied to me, personally. <laughs> look, 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 look. If you let me off the hook, if you let me on the hook, I'll... Uh... I, I'll I'll give you one of the one of the training decks for free. How about that? Oh, that doesn't sound half bad. All right, we'll reduce your punishment. Um, then I'm gonna try and put him to a chokehold. There'll be some more unarmed. Yep. <laughs> I just I just want to knock this guy out now. <laughs> All right. Yeah, this, like, beat-up little Indian man. Pretty- sir. Oh, Don, you're no longer muted. There you go. Uh, this, like, beat-up old, in like, Indian man. He he finally gives way and just kind of falls limp in your arms. He's- His breathing is very uneven, but he's breathing, and at this point, the blood from his nose is crusted over and stopped. Alright. And I'll just- I'll just plop him out of- out of sight of the door. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Puck myself a nice deck. Uh, so yeah, you're just going to walk out with the Sarugi? Yep. Uh, on your way well, out, like, the guard doesn't notice, I, I the kids are like... Uh, sorry, go ahead. The kid... so, well, sorry, what was that? Go on, sorry. Is it still uh, the kid's going to look up, it's like, hey, uh, have you seen the cashier? We're kind of looking to pay. How do you handle this? Oh, uh, damn it, I wish I was a con artist. <laughs> I mean, you could always go for intimidation. That's not as fun. It's up to you if you just want to blow- you could just blow past them if you want. Hey kids, everything is free today? Yeah, I could just do that. Oh. Um, you're going, to, you're going to do that? Actually, I just talked to him, and um, everything's free on the house today. As, as in, wait, as in using them as free or purchase? Yeah, um, I want to walk over to uh, some of the shelves. And you see, I mean, it's just a bunch of MCT trainers and a lot of, like, a bunch of data chips with, like, little AR games and shit, a couple of SimSense. Oh. One free training for me. He did promise me that. All right, take an MCT training. <laughs> and you're free to take a uh, SimSense rig while you're at it. Among you can just stuff your fucking pockets. Ooh, a SimSense. Hey, SimSense rig. Is that a? It's it's basically like an AR headset. Right. And gloves. Uh, you can also attach them to your comm link for, like, games and shit. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I'm just gonna have you roll memory real quick. Alright. Alright, like, as the kids are, like, trying to unplug these cyber decks and walk out with them, you do remember that there is a jammer active over the building. Now, you're gonna make these kids days, or are you just gonna let them brick their shit? <laughs> It's up to you. Um, if, if they're dumb enough, whatever. I am going to turn on my jammer. 
I mean, it's an area jammer, right? Uh, yeah, it's not a it's not a strong one though. Uh, I mean, you don't really you don't really know this, but the jammer is enough to kind of fry the system, mm -hmm. at least temporarily. <laughs> so the kids are just running out with like MCT trainers <laughs> and shit. Like these kids are running out with hundreds of thousands of dollars of equipment. Yep, making people stay. Like some of them are, some of them are stealing like SimSense rigs beside you. I'll do, uh, I'll do one last little... browse to see if there's anything, anything that stands out. Uh, you notice that there's a small shell, like a small uh, locked display case at the bottom of the at the bottom of the at the bottom of the shelf that one of the kids is uh, fiddling with. I'm gonna go over to it. Uh, you're kind of going to get on your knees and look, and it's just a bunch of like AR porn games. <laughs> Um, what kind of lock is it? Uh, it's just like a shit key lock. And it's a, what if it's like an uncleaned glass? Alright, um, I'm, I'm gonna try and yank it open. For the kid. That's, you, you don't even have a roll string, that shit just gives way. <laughs> it just, like, the lock just pops right the fuck out. And it <laughs> flies open, and this kid just goes, thank you dude, thanks dude. Are you going to want to shove his hand in there, take, like, seven different, like, AR porn games and fucking book it? <laughs> Alright. Like, he's got an a like, he's, like, he's got an MCT trainer under one hand and a backpack just... You can hear the sounds of boxes banging against boxes as he runs away. <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> countdown was a count this day. Like, Countdown's heart grew three sizes. <laughs> Yep, and I'll just walk out of the store at that point. Uh, this is this is a little bit metagaming, but there's still the cash register. Oh yeah, I I, I thought I looked at that. No, you didn't. I don't look at the cash register. Is is it a is it like an old fashioned cash register or is it a? Uh no, it's like a small computer basically. You know what? I'll uh I'll take my deck and I'll I'll plug right into the. Computer. Uh, all right, go for it. And you're, I mean, frankly, you're able to pretty quickly tell that there's the security on this thing is god fucking awful. Mm -hmm. Oh, you don't want a uh, cyber combat rule for, or a uh, hacking rule for me? I mean, you're just plugging it in. You're just able to like see. Okay. So, what kind of metaphor do you want to go for here? I was thinking like uh, medieval. Med really? Medieval? Yeah. I got a big sword. <laughs> Fair enough, alright. So how would you describe yourself in the medieval setting? Would you be like a knight or a mercenary? Um... Think like, um... Yeah, more of a mercenary look. Yeah, I was gonna say, like, think like the warrior from Dark Souls 1. That kind of look, where it's like... I, like I was thinking more like German mercenary. I mean, that too. What I imagined was like, uh... Dark Souls One Warrior like a, like, class, like, 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 a mix, like infantry the armor, soldier. the armor itself is kind of like a mixing of like leather with like with like plates. It's kind of like a mix, like a mismatchy um, look. All right, like a, so, yeah, you, like, like, yeah, like comparable to guts too. I guess his 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 mercenary look, where he has right. the uh, various armor. All right. All right, so you find yourself out in the middle of Bumblefuck. It's a small, very shitty-looking village, mostly composed of trashy mud huts, and there's maybe the one place that actually has wood, like, basic logs keeping its structure up. Mm -hmm. But the one you especially are standing in front of is... It looks no better than just twigs bound together, and the door <laughs> is pretty much just a curtain mm -hmm. that, was left out, that was left in the mud for too long and became solid. Right. There are windows, but they are, I mean, they're just curtains as well. The same, like, buddy sheet that were that was left out for too long. Mm hmm So, what would you like to do here? Oof. Um, so wait, you said I'm outside, and inside there was, like... Yeah, like, you're outside of, like, a really shit-looking house. I'll go inside the house. Uh, I mean... You kind of put some force on, like, the shitty door, but it doesn't give way without, like, a little bit of strength. <laughs> uh, so it's up to you how you do this. Yeah, I'll, try, I'll try and force it open. 
So you want to do brute force? Yep. All right, cyber combat plus logic. Unfortunately, my attack is at six because I didn't set my stuff. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go for it. And my cyber well, combat is seven, so I can't really hit my limit. Mm hmm. All right, so the way it works is, bam, and then um. What's up? So yeah, it's, I got two hits. Um, and then if it has a willpower and fireball, firepower or will will or I mean, it has no willpower, but fireball. it does have a f wow. So it's if they're equal, what exactly happens here? You know, I don't really know. Let's. Oh wait, actually, um, I am hot simmed in, so I do get two extra dice. Oh yeah, feel free. Not to try and break the tie. Nah, don't worry. Okay, I'll still die. Uh, well, it's still not enough. <laughs> so the door holds sturdy, but you are able to tell that with a bit of effort, you could definitely knock this thing down. All right. Cracks my knuckles. Oh, uh, you're free to do the minus one thing. Cracks my knuckles. Let's do this again with more firepower. It's actually, All right, it's actually it. less firepower, but... Right, so it's 86. Three successes... Stores and you pretty, you pretty much, you pretty much like posture and be like, "Why am I using my shoulder?" And you just kind of grab the sheath of your sword and just start bashing through <laughs> this shitty little mud fabric with the pommel and the hilts. Mm -hmm. And the thing just like gives like once the hardened mud gives way, you just start ripping through the fabric with your bare hands and waltz right into the house. Sweet. And you are greet and you are greeted by well, just a couple of parchments really sitting on the ground. No, start looking huh. through them. All right, so you kind of pick them up, and the parchments really just say money sent to uh, something like it's just hit like money put on put on uh, Daniel's coin pouch, and it's just several back and forths of Daniel's coin pouch to this household. Mm -hmm. And there is an empty treasure box to your right. Hmm. And, uh, do, what is the role for Matrix Perception? Actually, you know what, I'm not even going to make you, like, role perception because you're an AR shit. Mm -hmm. After you kind of look up from the parchment, you notice that there's this big, shiny picture of the Indian man from before with Employee of the Month, Daniel, under it. Oh. Uh. So, yeah, it's pretty simple. You just kept putting it, stuffing it onto cred sticks. Mm-hmm. Why are these cred sticks? Uh, I mean, where do you keep your cred sticks? Your fucking pocket. <laughs> <sighs> All right. I guess I'll uh, plug out then. Oh, is there, or, uh, is there anything else here? Uh, no. It's just a really bare bones little mud hut. Nothing of note, really. All right. All right. So you're gonna want to jack out and be like, "Well, yeah, that was your first decking experience." <laughs> Okay. So I'm guessing you're just going to wander over to your pal Daniel. Yeah, I guess so. And he is still, like, out cold on the ground, and you've actually noticed that his breathing has at some point stopped. What? You're dealing with, like, someone who can't even speak that you cut off air from. <laughs> oh, come on. It's sad, but who cares? It's not like you're ever coming back here. You have everything you need. I don't want to kill the guy. I mean, like, you did cut off airflow to smoke her lungs. Yeah, but, you know. It's, it's sad, but shit happens. <sighs> Alright. Well, he's not going to eat these anymore, then. Alright, so you just want to stuff your hand into his pocket? Yes. You are greeted by the very... Like, this rather... Uh, shit. I need to look at my cred sticks again real quick. Uh, ID slash cred stick. There we go. You're greeted by a platinum cred stick. Plug it in. Uh, the platinum cred stick within it holds 300,000 oh. 300,000 and 12 new yen. So this is pretty much like savings from the business for however long it's been open. 
Well, keep it on a single cred stick. You're dealing with a con artist. They're not especially smart in the finances department. Yeah, I mean, it's discreet. I give them that. Yeah. So you... And now, you I, now, I, now I look back at all his histories and I return the money. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not a good person. Yeah, gave some kids some free decks. Yeah, well, actually, yeah, he did give a bunch of kids some free decks and porn. Exactly. All right, well, well, I guess I'll pocket that and whistle my way out. And you kind of just open up the door to the gopher, wasn't even locked. Makoto has got her feet up and she's just napping. Oh no, I think that was a successful mission. And she's kind of, and like she's still out. Woman oh. sleeps like a log. <laughs> hmm. Oh yeah, AR porn would fucking destroy birth rates. Well, here's the interesting thing, um, like from most of the things I've looked at, pretty much the population has not changed in most places. From like the current to like now. So we'll let that say something. I mean, hey, I guess old. Well, I guess like orcs are the new Spanish people. Well, kind of, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's fucked. Anyways, yeah, you're free to just hang out there because you didn't raise the slightest alarm so the police aren't coming. Yeah. Um. Almost around my deck limit. I, I do want to check if there's any... Any... What, what signatures are coming from that store? If they're actually... Wor if the cameras actually do have a... Sig like. Oh, yeah. There were the, those cameras weren't actually plugged into anything. Okay. Damn, I wanted to erase the footage. There was no footage. I know. <laughs> <laughs> no. Hey, I hope you enjoy your three hundred, your three hundred thousand. Uh, sorry, three hundred thousand twelve new yen from a fucking con artist who stopped breathing in his back room. Poor guy. Oh well. Orcs have letters of three. So yeah, they are just Spanish people. Yeah. <laughs> uh. so yeah, you just want to let Makoto snooze it out or what? Yeah, I'll just start. I'll just get the car going. All right. I mean, like her feet are up on the dashboard, but she kind of just like. I mean, it's a big fuck off truck. So she kind of just slumped to the side a bit. It's like the uh, you know, you know, like pickup trucks. So you just have the three mm -hmm. seats at the front. Is there a rigor interface? Uh, there is, yes. I'll just plug into that. <laughs> Wait, that works? I thought you needed a control deck. No, no, you can do it with that deck. Just controller it makes it so much better. Oh, all right. Uh, so do you get any bonus for data check? No, it's just normal. Um. Oh, <sighs> well, yeah, in that case, I guess just, I mean, roll your pilot ground craft, I guess. Right. And I had this, and I had this whole like rigor practice, sorry, Decker practice course ready, but I guess we could still use it anyways for the shits. Wait, what? I don't. I actually had a Decker practice course ready. Uh, yeah, four. You make it. You make it home just fine. When you finally like deck out, jack out, cut the engine, like the sound of the editing, the engine sputtering out, like finally wakes up. She looks like ah. I guess when you got the shit. Yep. Cool. I I have not had a good night's sleep in a while. Mm. I'm amazed you didn't wake me, but whatever works. I'm glad you had my back. <sighs> the security uh... was, was pretty intense. Oh, shit, I'm sorry. Yeah. Did you at least get out with some good shit? Eh, something. I flip around the deck. Do they actually have a fair light? Well, this was the fair light. That... That that's a fucking red rock of Sarugi. Exactly. <laughs> All right, so I actually did have a little practice course set up for you because, as this is a technomancer school, we do need to teach them just a messing with the matrix. Mm -hmm. So we actually do have a protocol for the school network for pretty much practice things. We normally give them uh, MCT trainees, 
because well we're scared for their own safety and we did we they don't have bio uh biofeedback filters for the most part mm -hmm. but since you are an earl t big dick or whatever uh you're free to try it with your own deck and your own madness i mean it would be nice to get some programs for this first but uh why not uh, I mean, programs would be something that we handle off session. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Did, did Makoto say that? No, that's like <laughs> me. Yeah. Let's huh. go. All right. And she's going to note that, like, all right, <clears throat> your goal is to get into the office proper. You, re you have one jack in point at the front of the school, one at the back, and one in the actual office. Okay. But I mean, I, I'm, I mean, you know the basics of structure. If there is an entrance right next to where you need to be, it's going to be the hardest one to get into. So, depends on how cocky you are. Mm -hmm. And she's going to uh, pretty much just scratch, just give you like a little PDF of the school, like a little map with the area scratch. She's going to be like, oh, I'm going to head over to my office and go take care of shit. Good luck, bud. All right. Alright, so you're free to pick your starting location. Mm. School office, front of the school, or back of the school. <clears throat> you know what? Let's go front office. Wait, you're going for, like, the actual administration office? Yes. Alright, so you kind of just tail Makoto right into the back of the office. You're going to be like, okay, I guess you're fucking nuts after all. <laughs> And she's going to open up like a little uh whatchamacallit, a telecom room. It's like, yeah, the little your little uh jack in ports right over there. There's a little comfy chair and everything for you. We use this for the IT guy, but I became the IT person. Interesting. Yeah, and you're free to go for it. Alright. Gonna reprogram my tech a bit. I'm gonna go six attack, five sleeves, three data processing, and five firewall. Right. Yeah, you're free to just go in at any time. Right. I'll plug in. All right, and what are you? What you are immediately greeted by in your metaphor is you kind of come stumbling out of what appears of an old, barely functional manhole into what appears to be the enemy stronghold. All right. Below you is the shit. Like, the shit low-quality sewers you'd expect of medieval, of, like, 17th century medieval Europe. Mm -hmm. And above you, directly to either side of you, is what appears to be guard quarters. And, well, yeah, you just have two paths on either side of you, and both lead directly into guard quarters, where there are guards actively just hanging around. Alright, let's, let's go sneaking. Alright. Alright. Um, I want to I want to do this in like a kind of like a turn system, where you do a thing and then everything else gets its little chain of command. Yeah, it's fine. All right, so you're free to make your first move. All right, I'm gonna start sneaking in. Uh, I don't get, think it matters too much, but I'll go. Or do do both lead the same area or? Uh, you don't quite know. You only know the node that's directly in front of you. I'm following, like, IT logic, where you only know the exact direction in front of you. Right. Like, you only know where the next top leads. Alright, let's go left. I guess just for the sake of simplicity, you kind of pull a compass out of your pocket, <laughs> and there is one, there you can tell that one path leads to the west, and one path leads to the east. Alright, let's... Sorry, my mistake. One to the west, one to the south. Okay. Let's go west. You want to go west? Yeah. All right. Gonna sneak west. All right. So let's see. I'm gonna say hack on the fly. Try and get past there. Uh, there is a hide action. Oh, a hide action? Really? Yeah, right, really? The fuck? Oh, all right. Go for it. And I get to use intuition instead of logic, which is actually only one. Intelligence plus data processing. All right. Huh. Alright, let's look at the patrol ones. Data processing, logic. Host rating time. Okay, so it's host rating times two. Three successes. Alright, and now they're going to roll their thing. 
so basically there's their logic and intuition sets to decide by the host rating times two um pretty much yeah all right well the guard the guards are kind of they kind of look up they kind of look up from their banter and not all of them are immediately aware of you but a couple of them notice you they're kind of and they're they're eyeing you trying to see what you're up to but they're not actively hostile just yet Mm. But you are hanging out right in front of what appears to be their quarters. Right. Hmm. Alright, now I'll let everything else do their little movements. Alright, so I'm gonna send... I'm gonna send you... Alright. So something you do notice as you're kind of wandering around is around the same time you walk in front of the guard quarters, someone interesting does around the corner. It's what appears to be a knight in some relatively good-looking armor who, appears, who is discussing what you can pretty easily tell as battle plans with somebody. Presumably just another guard. Huh. And ultimately, you do come face-to-face -face with this person. And let's just do some matrix perception. That would be the stats. And he kind of just looks down at you, and he's kind of just going to kind of arch over a bit as he does. He is a couple of inches taller than you, not too much. And he's going to politely request that you keep your head down, because he sees right through you. And he's going to continue walking. What? Yeah. That once once you're done, that 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 whole exchange will make a bit more sense. But he's going to continue walking away. Okay. Hmm. Well, I'll keep moving on then. All right. So you can go east back to where you came from. You can head west again, or you can head south. Let's go west. The west again. Mm-hmm. All right, to so the west, you come across what appears to be a small, nice little villa. You can tell it's some kind of captain's quarters. And it takes no genius to figure out that's where the big fancy knight came from. Right. And he... Uh... Yeah, there's nothing actively hostile here, so you need to hack. You kind of just hop nodes. All right, so you went that way. Okay. All right, and in the distance you do hear the sound of what appears to be marching guards. There is some sort of changing of the guards occurring. And I'm inside the captain quarters. What? And I'm inside the, cap uh, the captain's quarters. The captain's quarters, nothing actually happens, because wherever they are going, they are not near you. All right. Yes. I'm going to look around the captain's quarters. There's got to be something valuable there. All right. Uh... I mean, you will need to hack into the building. All right, that's fine. All right, go for it. Um, I'll do... I'll try and be sneaky about it, so we'll do hack on the fly. All right, go for it. Two successes, all right. So now the building will roll its resistance. Oh shit! Or, and you kind of you kind of just like try to take your palm and put it right through the door, but it's it's pretty clear that it's some kind of hard oak, and the loud sound of your palm all bashing against the door echoes through the entire area mm -hmm. of the concrete walls of the little of the fortification. Oh shit! Oops. Hmm. And that's, I'm guessing that's going to be your little decision for the turn. Wait, my decision for the turn? Go home? Yeah, like a little, like, a, like you get one action for the turn. Oh, yeah. So yeah, that will be like your pommel smash. Yeah. So at this point, uh, you do hear footsteps getting closer to you. And after a while, you, uh, you kind of look to your, you kind of look around, and to the north and to the west, there are guards approaching. Ah, shit. Is there no one else in this room? 
Uh, nope. The captain's area is completely empty. Hmm. So the only place you do not see guards immediately arriving you from is from the south. Well, I'll run to the south then. All right, and there's no active guard, so that's not a hack either. And as you arrive, you do notice that there are guards coming towards you, but they are not immediately. But something else you can notice is that they are not immediately hostile to you. Mm-hmm. They do not know you were the one that did it. Okay. And they will end up rushing right past. So you are free to head northeast, north back to where you were, west, east, or south. The one direction that guards do not appear to be coming from is the east. Hmm. So going west, west, and then south. West, west, south. Is what you've done so far. Mm Mm-hmm. I'm going to keep going south. All right. Uh, You head south, right where the guard part of that rushed past you was. Mm -hmm. And there was a small garden there with a small gazebo. And it looks like somewhere... I think I can really describe it as somewhere a princess would hang out. They could just put together what this would be. Mm -hmm. And there's small notebooks strewn about on several benches and tables... Overall, it's a very nice, well-done area. I'm going to look around the area. Alright, like I said, just tables, chairs, several gardens, a gazebo, and there are just notebooks strewn all over the place, very haphazardly. Okay. Uh, can I look through notebooks if there's anything of value? Uh, let's see. Uh, you get several things on guard patterns. It's, I mean, the parchment itself, it's live updating, but what you do, I mean, it's a live, adi- it's a live updating, like, threat table, but what you just have is just several parchment sheets. Mm-hmm. And it's pretty much just the guards rushing towards specific, the location where you did noise, and the vast majority of the rest of the area is actually pretty clear. Huh. So it has where the guards are, like, currently moving? Yeah, where oh, they are cool. currently moving. That's and useful. they are the guards are pretty much gathered to the north and to the and to the far east. Right. This doesn't have anywhere labeled out. Anywhere labeled out? Uh to the I mean two hops to the north is where the com- where the commander's post is. Mhm. You're cur- you're currently at just the garden. Uh if you go one to the west and one to the south, you go to the f- the front gate. Uh, one to the west and three north. You go to the the back gate, and to your to your east is three separate guard posts, and to your east and up is pretty much the command center of the fortification. Is that where? In other words, you pretty much danced around the command center this entire time. Yep. All right. Um, as long as there's no guards in the way, I'll go east and up to the command center. All right, so you're going to head to the east, but you're going to have to do hide and hack on the fly to try to get through here because this is a barrack. All right. Let's believe. Because while there are no guards outside wandering, they, well, they're not blind. Mm Mm-hmm. Not bad. Ooh, and that's actually the same as my limit, so... It's going to be a slight debuff, considering most of the guards are out and about. Two successes. Uh, The guards inside are either having some ale or discussing battle plans, so you're able to go right past them without an issue. Okay. You said I have to hack on a fly to get inside, or...? Uh, Into the fortification? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So you're now one hop north to the fortification. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, should I do hack on the fly or brute force? Up to you. Because if I do, if I do brute force and I fail, it doesn't alert them where I'm at. 
but when I succeed, it will let it know where I'm at. Hmm. So it's really just up to you. Yeah. We're gonna brute force my way inside. All right, feel free to roll. Gotta go loud. Yeah. See, that's why I did that. <laughs> uh, you kind of whack your pommel against the door, and it, it there's there's like just a quiet thunk as you pretty much do the wimpiest door bash scene in this fortification. Hmm, I can't get my... I can't use my true... I'm waiting for him to get a mark. Alright, so it's up to you what your next course of action is. Hmm, now that I failed bash my way inside. Alright. Alright, now I'll try sneaking inside with hack on the fly. All right, go for it. You had to get on your knees and start trying to pick the lock. Just gonna believe. No, that's not. Just no. ninety-six, not four. Come on. All right. Oh my god. All right. And something that is pretty immediately I... evident is that this is not a door designed to be. To, it's more built for brute force attacks. And you actually, you know, you were able to immediately tell that you can actually, with some elbow grease, get this lock open. But it'll take a little bit more tact than you gave it the first time. Alright, minus one. Yep. Alright. Believe. The lock pops open. Alright, go inside. Alright. You're free to enter, and right inside is what appears to be... Well, you're pretty much greeted by the sight of a very well-dressed woman, and just clap your hands and you're saying, good job, you did it. I attacked, no, I'm kidding. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> well. No. Well. Let's see, let me try. I want to start my power. <laughs> Alright, let me see, what is she going to roll for this? Wait, what? I'm just reading something. Hold on. No, no, I'm, I'm just reading shit. Don't worry. Don't worry. I mean, I could take a hit even if I am hot simmed. <laughs> For successes, roll your firewall plus uh, intelligence. Er, logic or intuition? Intuition. Alright. Now that's actually a modest... <laughs> oh my god! Oh so god! And all and all and all of a sudden, a bunch of tar and feathers are going to fall from the rafters and just lock you in place. Like you, you can't move. It's and at this point, you're doing is just just jack out. I've I've got control of your deck. You're free to leave. <laughs> god damn it! Hmm. <laughs> You got tar and feather, and you're just humili humiliated in the heart of the stronghold. And it's just my code. She's like, she's got a breaking here. She's like, just leave. You, you've lost. Like she has control of your deck. You can't do anything. That's why I have a second deck. <laughs> what? Oh, <laughs> Nani! <laughs> you were dual decking this entire time. All right, I'll, 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 I'll jack out. All right, and with it, and like within a couple of seconds, Makoto's kind of just going to open the door and be like, "That was fun. That was fun." Was, was the current feather really necessary? Uh, I mean, I was going with your metaphor. I thought it would be fitting. Uh, feel it. <laughs> you, you, that's the thing. When your heart said, you actually feel it. And so that... yeah, you pretty much just feel your felt yourself getting covered in like goo and shit, and it was generally very unpleasant. Like that's actually a common thing people uh, deckers will do is so, like. Trying to overload someone's senses with like yeah. a disgusting smell to disorientate disorientate them. Mm. Yeah. Oh yeah, she's so gonna be like, yeah, you well. Really, it's really only the advanced students that can actually get through the me trying to take control of their device or their living persona in most cases. But yeah, you did fine outside of that. 
Oh yeah, if you're wondering who that night schmuck was, that's the uh, that's the sprite that I have running around the school system. Okay. Yeah, he's like I said, he's set up to not be hostile towards you. Right. Oh, I, I, I could have gone for a little fight with him. <laughs> he would have wiped the floor with you. I didn't say that, but you haven't seen my true potential. I'm sure I haven't. <laughs> Huh. And on that note, she's going to be like, well, I'm guessing you now have the gist of how this decking shenanigans works, right? Yeah, it's not that hard. He hasn't seen my secret technique unsheathed cyber implanted katana. <laughs> His hand just pops open and he just, he has the guts arm cannon. <laughs> it's, up, it's on my leg. Holy shit, can I, can I do that? Uh, yeah, you could actually just totally be that one chick from Full Metal Alchemist that has the cannon leg. Can I install my assault cannon into it? Uh, it would take a lot of finagling, but sure. <laughs> and also take up most of the space. I know, and I don't want that. <laughs> like 20 capacity. But you could. No. Totally good. I guess on that note, I'm going to give you a pat on the back. You'd be like, all right, cool. I just want to walk back to where off and start actually doing paperwork. All right. So in other words, you're free to rank up anything related to electronics or hacking. I had it cool. So let's see, uh, for Let There Be Porn, you're getting one karma. <laughs> for uh, pretty much bitching the guy, I want to give you another karma. And for just, I guess, chapter complete, quote-unquote, I'll give you another ten, as per the usual. Mm-hmm. They have 12 karma and a shitload of Nuyen to spend on whatever you want, and you're free to stay after the session to discuss what programs to buy with me. Ugh. So on that note, Azoth, you're free to pop your mic back on. But yeah, that was that. How'd I do? How'd I do dealing with magic and decking? Yeah, it was good. Yeah, you see, Sam, you see, Sam, you can do decking that doesn't last three fucking hours. <laughs> Look, man. Yeah, it has, if it, if it, especially when it's a course and there's only one person. Look. Look. I mean, I, actually, I, if, I, had, had he just gone west and then south from where he decked in, he would have, like, passed immediately. Yeah. <laughs> see, that's why I went right in the center. Mm hmm. Smart man. Look, I won't. I won't deny that New Orleans was kind of shit. You tried. I really did. <laughs> I don't know. As off my my cracking is gonna be better than yours soon. Oh shit! I can. Yeah, I, uh, I, I can get to nine. Uh, let me open up my cracking. Uh, mine are at six and eight because I'm defaulting in most of it. Weakness. Okay, just 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 go into hardware and software because I'll probably ignore that. <laughs> and do everything. I have eight else. dice in electronic warfare. Which I still need to read what it does exactly. Uh, I mean, you could also get a cyber deck and I, be and just become the decking duo. Well, I, I got two of them. Yeah, you give them yeah. the MCT trainer. Act, you mean the actually worthless? <laughs> give yeah. me the baby deck. <laughs> it's got an attack rating of two. You can't even change the stats in it. Oh no. I mean, it's it's two or one, so you don't really get that much to change. It, and at that point, you just that, sell it. And it can only fit one program. No, it's my backup deck. If you know, if my if my deck ends up breaking during a run, I need a backup. You got three hundred k. Sell it. You can buy a better deck. Uh, buy another Red Raku Sarugi. No, I'll, I'm going to save up for the 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 mad. Don't say that. Just kidding. I'm going to get more Bioware. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're also doing your... programs and agents, so that's what the 300,000 can go to. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I am buying the best... Hey, can I get Beyond Rating 6? Uh, what's the rating of the Renraku Sarugi? Is it the Vice rating? 
Yeah. Well, it's only three. Three? Uh, what about your comm link? Uh, six. Six? All right, then your cap is six. Like, I'm, the way I'm going to say it is the agents need, like, a host location where they're implanted before they, like, move out to other things. I'm just going to say they could be hosted on your comm link. <laughs> Um, the only issue is in they other words, the they're stats. basically like it's basically just streaming to your cyber deck to protect it. Is that fair? Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that I think that sounds about fair. I guess, but uses the stats of the deck. Yeah, it'll it'll use the stats of the deck. Don't worry. Okay. I'm just trying to justify how you're having rating six shit on a rating three deck. That's well, it's it's kind of a different concept is it kind of just like a well, here's the thing here's how deck works is you can have number of programs on it to equal its device rating and an agent counts as one program oh okay oh. Well, never mind you can do whatever yeah so i can have the agent and then two other programs or i could have three agents but that's just kind of unnecessary overkill yeah and i have memory serves you and actually get memory expansions uh, or at least you cut in 4e Memory expansions. Um, yeah, I don't even know what that is. Uh, it just it just gives you more uh, space for programs past the device rating. Oh, oh yeah, no, there is oh, yeah. there is a module. Um, yeah, that's it. Basically, it makes it it basically makes the decks the the decks like have less HP basically. Um. Or matrix or monitor, monitor, but you can space. you can jam more programs into it, right? Which is completely right. Right. yeah. And what is and what assume that what programs are based just like data chips you take in and out? Y yeah, you can have unlimited programs on the deck, but only three active or whatever the device rating is. Oh, but can you like swap with a free turn? Uh, yeah, it, it basically takes like a simple action or something. All right. So like when you reset your deck, you can you can start flipping around some programs. For what's best for the situation? Yeah, I think right. it's I think it's a simple to run a program, and but to swap the programs is complex. Yeah. All right, fair enough. I guess that's that for that session, right? Mm-hmm.